Black Alpha Network. Home of Black Excellence. There are many whites who are trying to solve the problem, but you never see them going under the label of liberal. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox. And a fox is almost is always more dangerous in the forest than the wolf. You can see the wolf coming. You know what he's up to. But the fox will fool you. He comes at you with his mouth shaped in such a way that even though you see his teeth, you think he's smiling. You take him for a friend. You know what we're going to do? What? We're going to give every last one of you 40 acres and a mule. And a mule? 40 acres and a mule. Jeez. Because we're your friend. And you're going to become voters. And you're going to vote like your friends do. Hello listeners, you are tuned in to the Black Alpha Network, that is B-A-N. I am your host, Black Alpha 6. This is another episode of the Black Alpha Cast, where we break down all the current news and events surrounding black society. So I really hope you enjoy today's show. Nah, man, fuck that. How y'all doing, Black World? What's poppin'? Welcome back to the real Black Alpha Cast. I am Black Alpha 6. We in the motherfucking building. Shout out to Certified Black Society, Foundational Black Americans, and all my B1s. We gonna do what we do. Hold it down, keep it real, and get after it on the regular. Hey, I don't know. I just feel good today. Today one of them days. Straight up, like Ice Cube said, today was a good day. You ever have one of them days where you just laser focus and you ready to put it down? That's what it is for me today, and I know it is for y'all. So we about to put it down, straight up. And like we said before, what's the best part about waking up black? It's another day to be excellent. Oh, and we excellent today, off top. Hey, and they had the nerve to ask me who we doing it for. God damn it, ain't that a shame? I told them like this, y'all already know, we doing this for all our brothers, sisters, kings, queens, the goddess, and the gods. Cause when we all together, can't stop us, baby. Be one and done. Bet that up and write that down. One love. All right, everybody. Y'all make sure you hit that subscribe button. Shout out to all my new ones. Shout out to all my day ones. Share this motherfucker all the way around the world. Black Alpha style, B-A-N, for sure. But we gonna talk about these Democrats or these Democoons or these liberals, whatever name you wanna call them, it don't matter. But we gonna talk about everybody out here who's pushing democratic ways upon certified black society and how they trying to physically walk us back to the plantation, physically. We gonna talk about them people who be on some, what's the matter boss, we sick? On some OJ Simpson, you know? I ain't black, I'm OJ. Yeah, they be on some, I ain't black, I'm a Democrat. These people identify with the Democratic Party. That's what they're beholden to. They're not black, they don't represent black. Being black is the furthest thing in their mind. They are Democrats first. They don't care about none of that. Now they're gonna act black so they can get us to serve their agenda. But in reality, they are just Democrats. We certify B1s daily. Them. They counterfeits Democrats for life. And we're going to let them know something. And we're going to do it right now because it's the B-A-N and we the best. Let's get them. There used to always be this liberal conservative, this black thing back and forth. But we're going to talk about the difference between a black conservative and a black liberal. We're going to talk about the difference between a black Republican and a black Democrat. Now, in reality, black folks can't be neither one of them. Because remember, the only group you could ever really belong to as a black person is B-1. And if you don't want to be in B1, good, evicted, don't come around. But I'll tell you like this, black folks got this thing where they think they're going to be a part of all these other groups. How are you going to be a part of these groups? And you a third, fourth, fifth class citizen. If that, you the water boy, you carrying the bags. Matter of fact, let me ask you this. Name me one group that ain't black, all the way black, black independent, black strong, black alpha, black network, black love. Name me one group that black folks are a part of, that they are leaders, not tokens, not a face, not a figurehead, I'm talking about naming one group that black folks are a part of or associated with where they actually are leaders. And if you can't be a leader in a group, then you ain't really in a group. Any group that you can be a leader in, you have full access to. Any group where you gotta play the background, you gotta be a token, you have no power, then you ain't really in it. You're playing a token role. Take Barack Obama. Barack Obama was the president of the United States of America, right? He's supposed to be the most powerful Democrat in the world, the most powerful person in the world. He was scared to say anything. He was getting checked by people in the trailer park. What kind of power he got? What kind of power you got? Cause I'm saying right now, 
Donald Trump, Joe Biden, when they're the president, they control their two parties. When Barack Obama was president, he had the power of a city council member, maybe a principal in the elementary school. I don't even think he had the power of a principal in the elementary school. Cause y'all know straight up, let Obama had said something about a W principal in the elementary school. Y'all know supremacist society would have got on code and reprimanded Obama. He would have had a prepared statement saying, I, I apologize, my words were taken out of context. He know he have no power. Cause black folks have no power, no institutions, none. They only there to be tokens. And Obama was cool with it, just like they all cool with it. Because they don't mind as long as they do a little dance for massa. As long as they can get them crumbs and them butter biscuits. They ain't even want the whole butter biscuit. They just want the crumbs of the butter biscuit. So these black people associated with these groups, they hold no power, they hold no weight. They just a bunch of chumps sitting there in office. That's it, they don't hold nothing. I don't care if it's a social group, a local group, a national group, they have no power at all. And they know it, they know it. Because as soon as they say something, they ask this up out of there. Black folks are the only people, particularly black liberals, that can have somebody who's allegedly at the top of the power chain, allegedly the leader, but they get reprimanded by people at the bottom. <laughs> Only with black folks can you have somebody who's the president who's getting checked by a senator. Only with black people can you have the police chief getting checked by a mall cop. <laughs> Paul Blart out here checking folks. <laughs> You'll have Paul Blart, a mall cop, checking the black police chief. I said I'm coming in it too. The black police chief be like, oh, okay, all right, mall cop, I'm sorry. Only with black folks can you have a principal getting checked by the teacher's assistant. You getting checked by a volunteer, they ain't even on payroll. The black principal be getting scolded by a volunteer because it ain't about job title, it ain't about position, it's about color, straight up. The complexion for the protection. And you ain't in any of these groups as no leader. You ain't in any of these groups as no shot caller. All you are is a token. You just there to serve somebody else's purpose. That is it. The only thing on this earth that you could ever be a part of, that you can have a voice, that you can represent is being B1. That you can be independent and have somebody respect you is being B1. And a lot of these folks don't even want to be that. What OJ Simpson say? OJ Simpson said what? OJ said, I ain't black, I'm OJ. And that's what a lot of these folks be talking about. They be saying, I ain't black, I'm a Democrat. Barack Obama, he ain't black, he's a Democrat. Michelle Obama, she ain't black, she's a Democrat. Angela Rye, she ain't black, she's a Democrat. Stacey Abrams, she ain't black, she's a Democrat. Bakari Sellers, he ain't black, he's a Democrat. Van Jones, he ain't black, he's a Democrat. D.L. Hughley, he ain't black, he's a Democrat. Cory Bush, she ain't black, she's a Democrat. Cory Booker, he ain't black, he's a Democrat. Simone Sanders, he ain't black, he's a Democrat. Get it? Proceed. Andrew Young, he ain't black, he's a Democrat. Raphael Warnock, he ain't black, he's a Democrat. Al Sharpton, he ain't black, he's a Democrat. John Lewis was a good trouble Democrat. In reality, none of them is Democrats. They just a bunch of tokens. Guarantee you that. Hey, don't get mad at me, because whatever we say about them, guarantee you all of their little constituents, they feel way worse about them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Y'all talking about y'all some Democrats. Let me tell you something. They calling y'all some, but it ain't the Democrat that starts with a D. They calling you a word that starts with an N. I don't mean national politician. <laughs> I don't mean nation trustee. Trust me, it's a whole nother word. And whatever we say about y'all, I guarantee you they saying that shit quadruple times worse because that's what y'all are. We know y'all tokens. Your own constituents know y'all tokens. B1s know y'all tokens and all those other Democrats, they know you tokens and you only there to serve a purpose. What's that purpose? To push liberalism on black society. You're nothing but a decoy. You're here to come in and secure the black vote. That's it. When you ain't securing the black vote, your ass is securing that damn door and they're kicking you out. They'll run you right up out of here. The thing is, is B1s, we don't go for that. And this era right here, this is the first era ever where we done stood up and certified and we start rejecting liberalism. We've been rejecting all them democratic policies and blackface. Because that's what it is. They try to make it look like black issues are democrat issues. And they're trying to mix those two up, make it real confusing, real murky. They love to make everything confusing so they can slide in and get their agenda off. But this is the first era in American history where black folks, B1, certified, foundationals, have said, nah, uh-uh, this is black independence. This is all about us. We don't care about your liberalism and blackface. Nice try. We don't care about your democratisms and blackface. Nice try. We don't care about your tokens or who you try to send in here and who you try to get to convince us that our oppression and that our struggle is associated with the Democratic Party. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. So this is why there's been this influx of all these black Democrats 
that have been coming up in here trying to push that stuff on black folks. And you've seen it from politicians, you've seen it from actors, you've seen it from rappers, you've seen it from these activists. You know, Tamika Mallory, we served her. My song served him. Sean King served him and much more. And we got all of them under pressure right now. All of them. Because there used to be a day they'd go up in the black church. They used to be in there damn near like mixing these democratic politicians with like spirituality. It was the craziest shit ever. Like you don't go into any other church and you see them mixing spirituality with a political party. But that's what was going on with black folks. They would go straight to the black church and then they would go get the John Lewis's of the world and all them civil rights people and they would push them upon us and they would almost mix spiritual messages with democratic messages. You know what I'm saying? Think about that. Let's break it down. We getting it. B1, baby. Straight up. That's how we go. We chopping it, family. All day. I told you, I'm feeling good today. Hey, if you ready, I'm ready. Hey, if you want it, I'm on it. Let's go. We're going to break this down. All right, feel me, B1 family. I love y'all. Let's get it, baby. Let's break it down like family. You know how we do. They can't see us. The same way that they try to mix black plight with democratic plight is the same way they will try to mix black spirituality with democratic plight. They'll take that democratic agenda, wrap it around our spirituality. They'll try to wrap it around our entertainment culture. They'll try to wrap it around our oppression. Think about it. Let's go there. They would talk about so-and-so got unjustly harmed. Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Freddie Gray, Rashad Brooks. They all got unjustly harmed and the democratic agenda will save you from it. If only the Democrats were in office, these people would be alive. You see how they're wrapping their democratic agenda around our oppression? Oh, black people are suffering. Black people don't have jobs. Black people are starving. Only voting Democrat can save us. The Democratic savior is on his way. You see how they're wrapping the Democratic agenda around our own struggle? Okay, it's the same thing they would do with our hip hop culture. They'll try to wrap their democratic agenda around our rap culture, around our R&B culture. That's why they'll come to us and they'll sing and they'll do a two-step. That's why every single president who has ran for the last 60 years has came up in the black church, has came up in black schools, has came up on black radio shows and did a dance, sang a song, said they rolling with hot sauce. I mean, you've even seen them talking in black voice. They got a black scent. One minute they talking all prim and proper to get around us. Says, What's up, y'all? What's up, though? We in the hood, Walden. What's poppin', man? Matter of fact, let's listen right now, then I'm gonna get back to you. I'm gonna play AOC. Listen how when she get around black folks, she went from all prim and proper to speaking in a black scent. You feel me? I'm gonna play them all back to back to back, then I'm gonna come right back to you, and we are gonna continue to break them down. Check this out. This is what organizing looks like. This is what building power looks like. This is what changing the country looks like. It's when we choose to show up and occupy the room and talk about the things that matter most, talking about our future. You know, I, Reverend, you bring up a, a funny anecdote, and I'm proud to be a bartender. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You see what I'm talking about? That's exactly what we're speaking of. Oh, and by the way, if you heard that cash register chinging, that's a receipt because we cash and race receipts on them. Spoilers, baby. But that goes back to my original statement. They'll wrap that democratic agenda around our oppression, around all these unjust murders of black people. Remember when Obama said, Trayvon Martin could have been my son. Didn't pass one law for his son. Didn't pass one policy for his son. He made one statement, words. He said that in 2012, black folks have been getting unjustly bumped off during his whole presidency. He got elected in 2008, 2009. Black folks been getting unjustly bumped off since 1619, okay? since 1526, if you really want to go there. So all of a sudden, in 2012, he makes a statement, Trayvon could have been my boy. Well, how come you didn't make no laws for somebody who could have been your boy? Huh? It was happening in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. Oh, I'll tell you why. It's because in 2012, it was what? An election year. And what was he doing? He was coming around talking that my democratic agenda will save you from white supremacy. AKA wrapping that democratic agenda around our oppression. Back to what I was saying. They also wrap it around spirituality. They were going to church. I mean, this is how low these people are. Real low. They'll go up in the church and damn near be mixing Bible verses with the democratic agenda. <laughs> I'm not lying, straight up. This is how low they are and this is the type of level they'll stoop to to con black people. They'll be mixing Bible quotes, Bible verses, Bible references, Bible characters with blacks voting Democrat. It's hey, I'm not lying. They will step off in the church and be talking about, and then on the seventh day, the Lord created the ballot box for y'all to come on down and vote for us. 
<laughs> we giving away free cornbread. Just make sure you vote for Biden. What the fuck? Y'all seen it? They be like, and Noah created this huge ark and got every creature on the planet to go over the flood. When they got on the other side of the flood, they went down and voted for Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> then Moses split the sea On one side was the Republicans On the other side it was your black vote They be using nothing but Bible references To get these black folks to vote for Straight up and down Y'all done seen it, I done seen it Over and over and over They'll use all these little metaphors and stuff Just to get you to vote Democrat And them civil rights folks used to be in there Eating that shit up Straight up They be in there dancing saying Ooh law, that's true now Bill Clinton mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton too Mm -hmm. Barack Obama gonna save us. Remember that shit. <laughs> hey, I'm crazy, baby. I don't give a fuck. Hey, I don't give a damn. It is what it is, baby. Hey, we broadcasting live. But that's what they used to do. What you think they in them churches doing? They ain't in them churches hanging out because they love us. They ain't in them churches hanging out because they love Big Mama cooking. They don't give a damn about that. They up in there getting votes, and they know they'll use some psychological shit to twist on black folks. <laughs> Anything. How you know he's in the church trying to wrap the democratic agenda around black spirituality is because when do you ever see them ever come in our church any other time? Do you? You can have one of their churches right next to our church and they'll walk right by us for 70 years. You got these churches that are literally 100 years old and you ain't had a W step foot in them one time. They never, ever, ever want to come to church with black folks. But all of a sudden, when it's election season, they show up. Ain't that funny? And it's also funny that your neighbors don't come to the black church. The people in town don't come to the black church. The locals don't come to the black church. The only people who seem to ever come into the black church are democratic politicians. Then you gotta ask yourself why. Is he there because he's down with us? Is he there because he rock with us? Is filling us? Because if that was the case, they'd be there every day. W's from all over the country be there. We'd have all these interracial mixed churches. We don't have no interracial mixed churches. Martin Luther King got his own mouth said the most segregated time in America is Sunday at 12 o'clock. So if it's the most segregated time, Sunday at 12 o'clock, how come it ain't never like that with election season? Or how come the only exception to that rule is the Democrats come up in there? I'll tell you why. Because they come up in there and they start mixing the Democratic agenda and they wrap it around black spirituality. The same way they wrap it around black singing. The same way they wrap it around black rapping. Same way they wrap it around black talking, black walking, black plight, black oppression, black kids, black women, black children. They take the Democratic agenda and they wrap that shit around our whole fucking community and they twist black folks into thinking what is Democrat is black. And in reality, blackness and Democrats are completely opposite they wrap the democratic agenda around gender straight up and down they be talking about w this w this w this things that go for their women they try to tell black women it goes for them you've never seen them go anywhere else and tell other women that those democratic policies are for them matter of fact sisters are the only gender that democrats will single out you'll never hear them talk about other groups in terms of gender they only talk about us when it comes to gender and they'll start passing agendas that they know damn well only go for becky only go for karen they try to make blackness synonymous with democrat they've been doing it for years and these democoons been falling for it but the b1s is in the place and we don't bounce none of that shit we've been kicking it on the fuck out and they hate it they hate it because remember the only rule that a black democrat has to follow is this right here they have to attack every other black person who's asking for tangibles. Let me, matter of fact, hold on, reverse, rewind, stop, freeze, let me get it. Let's talk about the blueprint that a black Democrat better follow, what they have to follow, or what they will be fired for. This is the only job title of a black Democrat. It is to go get the black vote. Whether you gotta get it by hook or by crook, it don't matter. This is what black Democrats have to do. This is what they are supposed to do. Just like on the plantation, the house Negro, he better follow these rules or his ass gonna be out in the barn. This is the same thing that black Democrats have to do. And this go for Barack Obama, Raphael Warnock, Stacey Abrams, it don't matter. When they talk about Stacey Abrams got all these people to vote. Yep, that's about the only thing she did. AKA Stacey Abrams went and wrapped the democratic agenda around blackness and gave all those tangibles to Massa. That's what their job is. You ever notice they'll never talk about black Democrats making any laws. Nope. They'll never talk about black Democrats making any policies. Nope. Name me one policy. Name me one policy that you can think of that a black Democrat has ever passed. Wrote that law, passed that law. It's sad that we can sit here and celebrate all these black Democrats and you can't think of one law that they've ever passed. I can think of some stuff Joe Biden passed. Crime bill. 
Now you sit here and tell me what one law. You ain't even got to give me two. I don't even need two. Give me one law that the black Democratic caucus, any black senator, any black governor, any black mayor, you name me one law that they've ever passed that is specifically for black people. I can't think of no laws they pass for any damn body, especially for black folks specifically. But if we just got to say one law, you can't think of one law they pass. I'll tell you what they have done. They've taken laws that have been written and then pushed that shit on us. Stacey Abrams, what do they praise her for? For getting people to vote. She ain't never make no laws for us. She ain't make none. Barack Obama didn't make no laws for us. And he was the president of the Democratic Party. How much power did you really have, bruh? And I told you, only a black person can be the president and still be somebody's understudy and still have no power. You know what a black Democrat really does? A black Democrat's only job is to be a voter registration person. That is it. When you think about accomplishments that black Democrats have ever came up with, you can't think of none, zero. We just sat here and thought about it. We can't even come up with one law that they've ever passed. So if you're a politician, who doesn't even pass laws. What are you doing? You're doing the thing that they only praise us for. Think about it. The only time you see a black Democrat ever getting praised is for what? Getting other black people to vote. So in reality, they're just a bunch of glorified voter registers. <laughs> That's it. A black Democrat equals a rock the vote campaign person. A black Democrat equals a voter campaign registration individual. Let me tell you something. You got 70 old women who get people to register to vote. So basically, a black politician has the same power as the church lady down at the municipal court building who registers people to vote. That's it, that's it. They ain't got no power, they ain't doing nothing. They ain't writing no laws, coming up with no laws, thinking of no laws. They ain't even suggesting any laws. Only thing they're ever doing is going to get other black people to vote. That's your only issue. Now everybody else in those other groups, they actually write laws. They actually pass things. Black folks, they just get other people to vote. That's it. I mean, shit, what we need them for? What they say, what we paying them for? I ain't gonna get somebody to do that. I ain't gonna get a 17 year old to have a rock the vote campaign. I know kids right now that go around and say vote, 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 put up stickers and stuff. They basically out here just putting up stickers and telling black folks, come on down, we'll get you some cornbread if you vote Democrat. That's it. A black Democrat is just someone who's there to register black people to vote. That's their only job. And I'm talking about a politician. It could be a family member. It could be somebody down the street. We've all seen what I'm about to say. This is the rule book. This is the manuscript a black Democrat has to follow. What is that? Number one, they have to attack any other black person who wants or asks for tangibles, straight up. These same folks who are always forgiven, forgive this, forgive this, forgive that, these people who are soft as candy, they're the main ones who turn into Kimbo Slice on another black person. They ain't never got no issues and they ain't never got no smoke for any other group in the world. Another group can sit here and say the worst things about us, can do the worst things to us, and they'll say, I'm sorry, I forgives. It's okay, turn the other cheek. Let one black person say, I want something for my vote. What's wrong with you? You a Trump supporter. That's wrong. Nah, I really, Trump is a clown to me. I don't give a damn about no Donald Trump. Yes, you are. Look at this last election. Look how all these soft Democrats turn into these roughnecks. And they only turn into roughnecks when another black person asks for some tangibles. It's to the point now that they literally openly attack black people who want something. You know, politics is, I vote for you, you give me something. But when it comes to black Democrats is, shut up, vote Democrat, and if you even ask for something, we gonna get mad at you. You've seen it. Black folks are saying, hey, can we get something for our vote? Black Democrats are saying, you don't need nothing. Just get Donald Trump out of office, do what we say. They turn into straight attack dogs, straight up and down, like they doing something. Like somebody worried about them, please, please. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Let me tell you, there's a lot of things on this planet Earth that's going to move something. There ain't no black Democrat, okay? Toby in the house ain't scaring nobody. Yes, indeed. Trust and believe that. You understand? This is the state. When a black person says, hey, I want something for my vote, here come the Democratic attack dogs because it lets you know their only job is to attack other black folks who want something. That's it. That's it. Look how mad they got at Ice Cube. Ice Cube simply asked for some tangibles for black people. Not diversity, just black folks. And look how mad they got at Cube. They act like Ice Cube was a criminal. They was tripping on Cube because they think that we're the property of the Democratic Party. And if we do not want to be property of the Democratic Party, then they'll catch a little attitude with you. Remember that lady in Georgia when the governor passed that voting law and that lady was knocking on the door, do, 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 do. 
How come you don't ever knock on a race soldier's door like that? You got black kids out here getting unjustly knocked off. You ain't knocking on them people's door. But you knocking on the door when it come to voting. She out there getting handcuffed, kicking the leg. I don't care. She turned into Malcolm X all of a sudden. Ain't got a lick of strength in her. But when it come to voting and the Democrats, oh, she'll get mad then. Because that's just like the slave on the plantation. He wouldn't bust a grape in the fruit fight unless you say something about massa. And that's what happens with them. When it come to issues that affect black people, oh, they won't stand for that. No courage. When it come to issues that affect the Democrats, then they'll stand against anything. <laughs> Sam Bo. What about reparations? No, no. What about education? No, no. Healthcare? No, no. Anti-discrimination? No, no. Voter rights? Hold on now. Your answer's die for that. Hold on. <laughs> Sam Bo. That's the political representation that black folks have. Basically, it's people that are guarding the Democratic Party with everything they owe because they're beholden to the Democratic Party. Because you know why? Because they not black. They Democrats. Oh, yeah. We black. We be one. We certified. We foundational. Them, they not black. They Democrats. Straight up. And if you ever say anything about the Democratic Party, if you ever ask for anything for your vote, oh, they're going to come after you. They're going to come after you. They're going to go from all that John Lewis, good twubba. Now, it's funny how when they was getting their head busted by a race soldier, it's good trouble. When they out here getting sneak attacked by a race soldier, good trouble. Turn the other cheek. And when a black person says, hey, man, can I get like one dollar for my vote? They're going to say, what you want something for? You go vote for that massa and be quiet. Your ancestors died for you to vote. Either you're going to say I want something tangible and they're going to get mad. You know, when they turn in them CWAs, coons with attitudes. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know the folks that's talking about good trouble and forgiveness all day long, and they only get mad at other black folks. Them. They try to get rough. Ain't scaring nobody, but try to get rough. They either going to attack you for asking for something, or they're going to try to shame you. Straight up. They tell people all the time that your ancestor died for you to vote Democrat. That's what they really believe. They didn't think our ancestors died or were enslaved or built this country for their own offspring, for us to be free, for us to live. They literally think that our ancestors died and were enslaved so you can go vote blue. That's what they think. They don't really think that our ancestors suffered. Our ancestors were oppressed for us to live, to breathe, to be humans. They think that they died just so you can go vote Democrat. That's it. That's it. That's what all the things we suffered for for 400 years is just so black folks can go vote. That's it. You ever notice this? They never tell you that your ancestors died for you to stand up and be strong. They never tell you our ancestors died so we can get an economic base. So we can build our community. They never tell us that. They never tell us that our ancestors passed away and suffered so we could have black love. So the black man and the black woman could build a black family. Have you ever heard any of these folks tell you that your ancestors suffered or your ancestors died for us to be a strong community, for us to build a community, for us to have an economic base, for us to have our own independence? You never heard that. You never heard them tell you that because they ain't never said it. Only time they ever hit you with that ancestor stuff is when they're telling you to go vote blue. That's it. Not economics, not family, not kids, not love, not pride. Nope. Go vote blue. That's it. So that's the number one thing is it gets you to vote Democrat is to attack people and to shame people. Those are the top three things they have to do in order to be a black Democrat. If they ain't doing that, they ain't really got no job position. A politician is to serve the people. I mean, this is how politics works. I give you my vote. You give me something in return. With us, it don't work that way. No, no, no. For everybody else, the Democrats serve the people. But with us, it reverses. Black folks serve the Democratic Party. Now let's look at their actual policies. It is the Democrat who is trying to replace FBA. All their policies are those to replace FBA. They'll straight up say it out their mouth. They'll tell you other people build the country. <laughs> straight up. They'll write laws to protect other people. They'll never do it for FBA society. They'll never do it for us. No, no, no. Certified blacks don't get nothing. The Republicans, they trying to run everybody out. The Democrats are trying to run us out, specifically. They say everybody else can stay, y'all got to go. Let's erase them. That's what it is, a race replacement. You feel me? Look at the policies of Donald Trump. Donald Trump was saying, we're going to get them, 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 and them out of here. Joe Biden says, we just going to get FBA up out of here. Them only. Think about it. It's the Democrat who says immigrants built this country. Conservatives don't say that. It's the Democrat who says the middle class built this country. Conservatives don't say that. I just seen Joe Biden say that the other day. I've seen him say it multiple times. Oh, and let's take that further. When that Tim Scott guy, the Republican, when he said, after he was rebuttaling Joe Biden's little speech, he said, racism does not exist. America is not a racist country. All of those Democrat black folks was tripping. 
those Demo Blacks, they was tripping. They was like, how can he say that? A few hours later, Kamala Harris said the same thing. A few hours after that, Joe Biden said the same thing. As a matter of fact, let's listen to it in their own words. Check it out. Kamala Harris, Joe Biden saying there's no more racism. Voila. First of all, no, I don't think America is a racist country. I don't think America is a racist country. I don't think America is a racist country, racist country, racist country. I don't think the American people are racist. I don't think the American people are racist. I don't think the American people are racist. But I think after 400 years, African Americans have been left in a position where they are so far behind the eight ball. Boom, case in point. I don't know what y'all heard, but I think we all pretty much heard the same thing. I think we heard a Republican say racism doesn't exist anymore. And it was such a bad thing. All the black Democrats was angry about that. And then we heard two Democrats, not only two Democrats, we talking about the two Democrats that black folks hand selected as the saviors. Two Democrats who said that they're down with us. They straight up said the same exact thing. No talk, no talk. It's to the point now <laughs> with these black Democrats, they are trying to walk us back to the plantation and they will do everything in their power to get us back on that plantation. It's to the point where a Democrat can say the same exact thing as a Republican and they won't even acknowledge it. They'll gloss right over it like it was never said. Just won't even talk about it. No talk at all. Deal Hughley, he was on there going off on Tim Scott. And then our sister queen, Vicki Dillard, called him out. She said, well, why don't you say something about Kamala Harris? And what did Hughley do? What y'all think he did? He made an excuse. And he said, I did say something about her. No, you didn't. You said a little two little second statement, real soft, and then you gloss right over it. Which shows me that you didn't really want to go in on it. And you only did because you know we was watching and we was going to call your ass out. And that's exactly what he did. He spent a whole hour talking about Tim Scott, threw a little two second little bone real quick on Kamala Harris, jumped right back off it and went on Tim Scott because that means he didn't really want to say nothing. He didn't really want to say nothing. You feel me? Remember this about a slave. A slave does not just serve massa. A slave has to recruit for massa. Now, whether that recruitment means getting mad at people, getting mad at Ice Cube, getting mad at you, getting mad at me, getting mad at B1s, foundational, certifieds, it don't matter what it is. A slave is gonna do masses work. They're gonna try to get every last one of us on their little boat, on their little team. But guess what? We ain't rolling that way because we got our own shit. <laughs> hey, and I'm gonna tell you like this. No matter how much they try to get mad, no matter how much they try to get a little attitude, they ain't moving nobody. They ain't making no waves. I don't give a damn what they talk about. Black folks who ain't going for that bullshit is stronger than ever. And if we strong right now, shit, wait until tomorrow. And then the day after that, and it's gonna grow every single day, stronger and stronger. So basically what I'm trying to say in other motherfucking terms is if they do not like B1s, if they do not like certified black society, they better get used to it because we getting stronger. Facts. You know what I'm saying? We move on a whole different level. Straight up and down. We got it right. They running around here trying to hold somebody else's weight. We hold our own weight. They running around here being dependent on somebody. We independent. They over here relying on them. We got our own shit popping. Because in this game, there's only one thing that matters. And that's the B1 family, baby. Right here. Hold that down. Yeah, we pushing that line. It's damn good, too. And what we living in right now, these days, these times, right now, is full out minion time. They are sending these people out to get black folks on the plantation. It is now. Like we always speak on, we've been too solid. We've been too strong. B1s is growing every single day and they don't like that. So they have to bring us in. It's no different than the plantation. You go back on the plantation when folks was getting riled up and they was about ready to do something, they had to go get more house Negroes. They had to go get more minions. They had to teach those minions. The more you get woke, the more minions is gonna come out. And that's what's been happening. They are in full panic mode. They are getting every single minion they can find, every single black Democrat they can find. And it is right now, black Democrat versus foundational black Americans trying to get us back on the plantation. That is a number one goal. How can we get these foundational B1s in check? Because we on code and there ain't nothing that a black Democrat hates more than a certified who's on code. Because when we on code, we represent the complete opposite of what they want. They want us to be quiet, not live, not be liberated, don't ask for nothing, hush hush, and just keep voting Democrat blindly. I ain't making this up. If a liberal says this how black people act, then black Democrats say this how they are, this how we are. Straight up, it's the what's the matter boss, we sick, same thing. 
It's the same thing he's playing out today. You feel me? It's the same way that the slave saw black people the way the slave master told him to see them. Then they cape for literally every single democratic liberal policy. They use liberal terms, liberal words, cape for liberal policies, liberal beliefs, and then they try to pass it off on black folks like, this is all our stuff too now. This affects us. This is our issue too, y'all. No, it ain't. Them is liberal issues, not black issues, straight up. We are clearly in the black face era where you take liberal policies, democratic policies, put it in blackface and force it on us. The liberal blackface Democrats. I mean, look at the Bill Maher show. Look at all those racists on his show. Now he's to the point where he's just bringing on supremacists and saying, hey, let's hear your supremacist point of view. Tell us why you don't like black folks. Let's talk about how innocent you are and how guilty those blacks are. And he was one of those yo, 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 down for the call, stick up for black folks. As soon as black folks got independent, as soon as black folks got woke, now all of a sudden, you can't tell Bill Maher from Bill O'Reilly. You see it clear as day. Go look at when he said the N-word. His whole audience laughed. They thought it was funny. They didn't see no racial justice issue. They thought it was ha, ha, ha. Why? Because they feel the same way. The only difference between a conservative, a liberal, a Republican, and a Democrat is that the Democrat wears blackface. Yes, indeed. If you get on the Bill Maher show and you say something about the climate, the whole crowd will cheer. You get on that show, you say something about another group, the whole crowd will cheer. You get on there and you say something about animal rights, the whole crowd will cheer. You say something about the black condition, you'll get two claps. <laughs> Straight up. I've been saying it for years. I identified this a long time ago because when it comes to Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, they are all a part of supremacist society. Only difference is, is one got their face painted black. The term liberal supremacist, that needs to be the newest, most used term in the 21st century. Straight up, we are right now erasing, canceling, deleting, all of that. Only the Republicans are bad, only the South is bad. That is for first graders, okay? That's for kids, baby. Grown ass adults understand that supremacy runs all the way across the board, full circle. I don't care what your political party is, I don't care what your political affiliations is. I don't care if you put an R or a D, you wear a red or you wear blue. Your ass is a part of supremacist society. We're going to call you out. No longer are liberals going to hide behind conservatives. No longer are we going to play good cop, bad cop. No longer are the Democrats going to say racism is bad only when there's a Republican president. Racism is good when there's a Democratic president. I mean, look at it clearly. When Donald Trump was president, they was talking about racism, racism. The Democrats were screaming racism louder than anybody. Y'all remember that? Remember, these MAGA supporters are so racist. Trump's America is so bad. Donald Trump done embolden all the racists. Proud boys, the bungalow boys, denounce racism, Trump. Then as soon as Joe Biden got elected, oh, racism's gone, it left. Packed his bags about two o'clock last night and left while everybody was sleeping. <laughs> Democrats were screaming racism louder than anybody when Donald Trump was president. When Joe Biden's president, they say racism is gone. They ain't even wait a whole year to say it. Trump was president, racism was in full effect. Joe Biden's president, no more racism. That's how Democrats play the game. They've been doing it for years and they're gonna keep on doing it for years. The narrative always changes. Every single time there's a Democrat in office, racism is good, y'all. Every single time a Republican's in office, racism is bad, y'all. Let's just look at the last few years. Y'all remember when Obama was president? They said it was a post-racial America the first day. And then Donald Trump became president and it was racist again. And then Joe Biden became president and then it went back to post-racial again. That's the con game, that's the trick bag, that's the bamboozle. And they keep on doing it. Why do they do it? Because they're playing good cop, bad cop. You need the bad cop to get you to vote for the good cop. You need the good cop to get you to vote for the bad cop. But in reality, they're both supremacists on the same team. And if you get a second, you go look at any liberal website. They are not talking about issues for black people. They don't even come up. It's a non-factor. They're not talking about reparations for black people, non-issue. They're not talking about black economics, non-issue. They're not talking about black Wall Street, non-issue. Black family, black healthcare, black education, non-issue. Honestly, black folks don't even come up in these liberal circles. Straight up and down, we don't even come up. Go play spook by the door and go listen to Democrats and liberals. You go look at black folks, the things that we'll list one through 10, and then you go look at what liberals list one through 10. Your shit ain't even in their top 50. Straight up, they're not talking about anything that goes on with us. Liberals are not talking about 
issues that black people benefit from, they're talking about their own issues and how we can go out and do the work for them. Facts, they still out here doing slave labor. You put in the work, everyone else benefits. And you don't see a dime. Sounds familiar. And speaking of slave labor, let's talk about the differences between a black conservative and a black liberal and why a black liberal is far more dangerous. They're the wolf that Malcolm was talking about. See, someone like Candace Owens, she gets her racism from the conservatives. She's got that in your face, angry conservative racism. Black folks see that coming. That style is too in your face. That style doesn't make black folks feel comfortable. That doesn't make folks feel happy. Black folks want to feel happy. They want to put their head in the sand. They want to go to escapism island, a world where white supremacy doesn't exist. So that's why they run from that kind of racism and they run right into the arms of the Kamala Harris's of the world, of the Barack Obama's of the world, of the black Democrats of the world. The Democrats sell a style of racism that makes black folks feel good. And they're going to always run to that. The wolf? Nah, that shit's too in your face. Uh-uh. No, no. The fox, though, was smiling, showing their teeth. Oh, black folks gonna hug that, cling on to that all day long. All day. So whoever's selling the more comfortable racism is gonna be the one who's got black folks in the palm of their hand. And that's gonna be the one that's way more dangerous. And that is exactly how the black Democrats play it. And that's why black people give Democrats 98% of their vote every time. It ain't 98% of their vote because they're a part of supremacy. It's 98% of their vote because that style of white supremacy makes them feel comfortable. And black Republicans, they try to cater to white culture and black Democrats try to cater to black culture. But when you peel the layers back, they both have the same supremacist agenda behind them. Damn, we be dropping the motherfucking receipts. Another spoiler, baby. B1 Brigade, we in the motherfucking house, man. They can't stop us. We too damn strong. But speaking of strong, remember this. When you talk about white supremacy, they have to play good cop, bad cop. They thrive off of it. And what's good cop, bad cop? That means they gotta have all doors covered. So you're gonna have one person who covers the front door, the other who covers the back door. You understand? The good cop, he covers the back door, the bad cop covers the front door. And they understand they gotta have both of those covered because that's what keeps us in the house. That's what contains us. So what ends up happening is black folks go to that front door and they try to get out that way, boom, they run into that. Then they try to go on through the back door, boom, they run into that. And that's how supremacy keeps everybody in containment. That's how supremacy keeps everything in order. They make sure they got a good cop for a bad cop. They make sure they got a bad cop for a good cop. But either way, you're gonna run into something. You feel me? And if you do that for long enough, eventually folks is gonna start picking teams. I like the back door better. I like the front door. I like the good cop. I like the bad cop. And that's what you call a black conservative and a black liberal. Point proven, case closed. You ever notice the only thing they'll fight for is voting rights? If it got something to do with voting, then they'll fight for it. When it comes to black people getting unjustly harmed, when it comes to black people not getting proper education, proper health care, proper employment, they don't say nothing about that. Now why is that? I'll tell you why. Because reparations only is for black people. Economics, only for black people. Education, healthcare, that's specifically for black people. We control that destiny. Voting, that benefits the Democrat. Oh yeah, there's your answer. The only reason why black Democrats will only fight for voting rights, won't fight for nothing else that affects black people, is because that benefits their slave master. Think about the words they use. Again, it's all about words. Follow the words, follow the terminologies. The only law that they talk about black people specifically is voter rights. When it's black reparations, everybody included. When it's black education, everybody included. When it's black health care, everybody included. When it's voting, then it's black vote. <laughs> they don't say POC vote. Then all of a sudden, all those collective terms disappear and then they get specific. Look how quick it'll go from everybody to black. The only issue in the United States of America that they talk about black people specifically in is voting because they know black folks are going to go vote for who? The Democrats. Everything else we control. Everything else we determine our destiny. They don't like that. Mm -mm. No, no, no. If it's something that we determine, they got to add everybody. Reparations, healthcare, education, economics, all those things we just mentioned, that only goes for us. That only benefits us. 
The reason they only fight for black voter rights is because black voter rights benefits the Democratic Party. That's the only reason, that's the only law that they'll use the term black specifically. Got him again, baby. <laughs> we handing out L's left and right. B-A-N, baby, certified black. We see him, we see him, we own you, in case you ain't know. But check it out, that's the only reason that they deal with black voter rights and no other law for black people, because they understand black folks vote blindly for them. I mean, simple mathematics. The only thing they would ever support is something that goes back in their favor. Now you see how we say they wrap the democratic agenda around every aspect of black society? They do it with gender, and they try to tell black women that the democratic agenda is their agenda. They do it with spirituality. That's why they go into the black church and they try to wrap the democratic agenda around Bible verses. They do it with our culture. They try to wrap the democratic agenda around our culture. That's why they sing, dance, rap, and always got some type of hibbity bebop shit for us. They do it the most with our oppression. Black people being unjustly harmed by race soldiers has turned into the biggest democratic campaign slogan out there. Black lives matter. That's why they're all Democrats. And it's the cycle of supremacy. Oh yeah, the cycle of supremacy. Race soldier harms innocent black people. Black people take to the streets. Democrats show up, tell us to vote Democrat. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris get elected. Damn. Damn, damn. You see how that all play? You see how that all go around full circle? You see the supremacist cycle? Oh yeah, race soldier takes us down. Democrats show up and say how they're going to save the day. And then we all run to the polls and vote for the Democrat. And the next thing you know, the Democrat says, I don't think America is a racist country. Then the next thing you know, the Democrats say, I don't think America is a racist country. And then they turn around and say, I don't think America is a racist country. And then black Democrats say, nothing. <laughs> That's how it goes down. Think about it. Breonna Taylor, she got turned into a Democratic campaign slogan. George Floyd got turned into a Democratic campaign slogan. Rashad Brooks got turned into a Democratic campaign slogan. Everybody, they were showing up to our rallies for black folks and turning them into anti-Trump rallies, turning them into Joe Biden rallies. They'll never do this with anybody. Do you think they'll ever show up to a Me Too movement and tell all them go vote blue? No. Have they ever showed up to anybody else's rally, march, or protest and say, quit complaining and just go vote blue? they would never say that. Never. But with black folks, no matter what happens to us, the answer is always vote blue. Vote Democrat. You'll never see at anybody else's protest folks showing up with shirts to say vote. You ever notice that? Look at the trickery. Look at the psychological games they play, the reverse psychology. You'll sit there and see an interview where they'll ask somebody about Breonna Taylor, and then next thing you know, people will show up with shirts to say vote. Look at all the basketball players, all the basketball players. When the NBA was down in that bubble in Orlando, what they do? They spray painted Black Lives Matter on the ground and all the players wore shirts that said vote. I've never seen them go to any other group and wear shirts that say vote. And those two things cannot coexist in the same room. And this is why you see this new surge of black Democrats trying to get us back on that plantation. And why is that? It's because black folks are the only people on the planet who think a political party is their race. They got it completely fucked up. You know how motherfuckers say, you got it fucked up? Black folks got it fucked up. They literally tied their existence into a democratic party. <laughs> Shit, I mean, that's low, that's a sunken place. Tie your existence into your offspring. Tie your existence into your children. Tie your existence into liberation, freedom, justice, oxygen. God damn, being able to breathe, tie that into existence. I even give you money. Tie your motherfucking existence into getting some money. How the fuck you gonna tie your existence into a political party? <laughs> God damn. They got it fucked up. I ain't in my life ever seen no other group confuse a political party with their existence, with their race, with their oppression, with their struggle, with their offspring. Fuck no. Would nobody else ever do that because they understand politics are that, just politics. Out of the trillion fucking things on this planet that you can associate yourself with, you associate your existence with a political party, and then you get mad and want to attack people who do not agree with that? A political party that you don't hold no weight in? A political party that you don't pass no laws for and got no leadership position, but you associate your existence? You associate your whole race's existence with this? 
Let me tell you something. If you're a black person right now and you have a young black child, black Democrats think that your child belongs to the Democratic Party. Oh, yes, they do. They think your wife belongs to the Democratic Party, your husband, your grandma, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your cousin, everybody. They think every living, breathing black person belongs to the Democratic Party. Oh, I got receipts. You want to know how I know that? Oh, let me tell you. If you're wondering where I'm getting that from, think about it. If they tell us that our ancestors were enslaved just to vote for the Democratic Party, don't they think that our children are only here to vote for the Democratic Party? God damn it, that's a race receipt. One more time. One more time for your motherfucking mind. There you go. You cannot tell me somebody who believes that all the things that foundational black Americans have suffered through was just because we can go to the ballot box and go vote for Joe Biden. You cannot tell me somebody who believes that does not think that a black child is here to serve the Democratic Party. They serve the Democratic Party. They think our ancestors served the Democratic Party and they think our future, our young kids are here to serve the Democratic Party. Put it this way. If your children grow up and they say, I'm not voting, no tangibles, no vote, no reparations, no vote. Who going to be the ones who get mad at them? The same ones who get mad at us for doing it. The same ones who told us that we suffered just to vote for the Democratic Party. <laughs> I just told somebody not too long ago. I put it on the dub. I told him, my race is certified black. Your race is Democrat. You can have that. I don't want it. My heritage is black. My lineage is black. My offspring is going to be black. My ancestors are black. I got DNA flowing through my blood. That's black. You can have the Democrat shit. I go to black family reunions. You can go to your uh, Democrat family reunion. But guess what? When I go to my family reunion, everybody there look like me and rock with me. When you go to your family reunion, it look like Master's Plantation. You got to stand up the whole time. <laughs> you probably passing out the food. So certifies, we super good. Be ones nah, we cool on that. We gonna keep it certified over here. So you can keep your black Republican, your black Democrat, and we just gonna keep it certified, foundational, B1. And I guarantee you, we stand stronger. Hey, what we say around my way? <laughs> we win, bet that. All right, everybody, that was another Black Alpha cast. We pushing, we building, we working, we grinding, we on the move. Can't stop us. We on fire right now, and it's going to stay that way. But this goes out to all the brothers, sisters, kings, queens, the goddess and the gods, and all the gods, goddesses, sisters, brothers, queens, and kings. <laughs> all the way around, man, forward and back, inside out, baby, for sure. I say that on every episode and it means more to me every single time I say it. It's like a fire, man. It only burns brighter and it goes stronger and stronger with every single second. I love y'all with a passion. It was good exposing all these, what's the matter boss, we sick? It's good exposing all these, I ain't black, I'm OJ. I ain't black, I'm a Democrat. I'm black B1 to the motherfucking fullest, straight up and down. I know that, you know that, we know that, and most importantly, they asses know that. All right, Foundationals, I hope y'all having a good year, a good month, a good week, a good day, a good hour, a good minute, and a damn good right now. Enjoy the rest of your day. Keep shining, man, and I'm gonna catch all of y'all on the other go around. Salute, salute, salute. Black is beautiful, and beautiful is black. <laughs>